So my name is Trudy Lang. I'm the Professor of Global Health Research at the University of Oxford, and I lead a programme called the Global Health Network. So the Global Health Network is a, a huge community that exists across the world, and it works to connect um, health researchers with health research organisations. And it, it actually doesn't do research. We do a bit of methodology research to work out where the problems are. But actually what the Global Health Network does is it works in person in healthcare settings across the globe and online and it connects research organisations with health workers and researchers and it moves knowledge because it doesn't matter what disease you're working on or what type of research, the barriers to doing that research are the same. And so the Global Health Network works to move information across diseases, across healthcare settings and between organisations to try and move that how to do research from areas of high expertise to low expertise. So our dream scenario is you're a researcher in Nepal, you're working on, say, leishmaniasis, but you haven't got a big research centre that you're work based in, but you've, you, you, know, you can see the problem, you know what research you want to do. We would really like that researcher to have access to exactly the same knowledge, tools and training, resources, ability to do research as somebody in Oxford or Harvard. So that's what the Global Health Network does. We try and get that knowledge and ability and confidence to that researcher. So it doesn't matter where they are in the world, they can do the same standard of research. So the Global Health Network exists to support research where research isn't happening. So it's all around moving information from um, people who have expertise and lots of confidence and experience doing research to uh, places where they want to do research, but they feel it's something that's not for them. There's often this perception, I call it the pyramid, and what we're trying to do with the Global Health Network is literally flip the pyramid, right? So you've got the kind of hierarchy of research that operates in the top of that pyramid, you know, the perception that you need a, you know, two million welcome grant, or it's just for the top clinicians in the hospitals. It's, you know, it's, it's really what we need to turn over and, and really encourage, um, you know, every healthcare practitioner that research is something they can do. And so the whole point is really to connect up people in the whole of the pyramid, but really um, in the base, which is where the strength of a pyramid is, to be able to believe that research is something they can do and it can change the practice of whatever's in front of them and li literally to give them the skills and resources to do that. So by connecting them with each other, by connecting them with research organisations and by providing them with access to the training, the knowledge, the tools and resources that they need to then do that research they've now got the confidence to do. Some of the biggest questions that we're, we're facing globally now are, I mean, obviously there's a whole... Um, whole load of activity on the net what's the next pandemic what's what's the next covid we did some research recently with um with welcome about what health workers in the low resource regions of the world believe is the next likeliest next infection to emerge and it, the results were quite surprising because there's been a lot of focus on the next pandemic being something that pops up again we weren't expecting maybe a respiratory pathogen but actually what we were told very, very clearly by over 3,000 researchers across Africa, Asia, and Latin America, that it's the big three still, malaria, HIV, TB, really actually all the diseases of poverty that are the biggest threat. And, the, and so because they still persist and because they're driven by poverty, they're driven by climate change and also things like antimicrobial resistance. So you've got really the vector-borne diseases are the biggest burden. And so the biggest things that we can make an impact to do is to do really pragmatic research in the base of that pyramid on those diseases that have been with humanity for as long as humanity really and and help nurses junior doctors you know every level of the healthcare workforce to see research as something that they should be mandated to do and supported to do in their workplace so they can do the really pragmatic things to you know spot where these infections might be arriving where they hadn't before or really to, to come up with new ways to tackle them that um, are very pragmatic often you don't need gazillion dollar research programs all the time you can do very pragmatic research on measuring what's in front of you and so that's really um, what we're trying to shift for every disease we need a whole ecosystem of health research to get all the answers to the questions and I always use Zika as an example because we knew much less about the Zika outbreak than we did about Ebola or COVID or anything else so for those mums that were having those babies, you know, really awfully disabled babies, we needed to answer all those questions all at once. And so if you can place research into the most um, impoverished communities where healthcare is really hard to access and, and there's such low investment in healthcare, 
by enabling pragmatic research in those settings, then you can impact patients immediately. So it might be looking at different ways to refer mothers to where they have their babies or looking at malnutrition outcomes or use of antibiotics. That's a really key one at the moment. And if you do that pragmatic research in that frontline context, then you can you can literally change outcomes immediately because you learn about better ways to manage those patients or access care or find interventions that work or detect that there's a disease that's causing a problem you didn't know before. It's a real immediate impact on practice because you're you're kind of learning by doing in in the, in the healthcare setting. So it matters because every every disease needs this whole ecosystem of health research. Lots of the funding is often siloed into the kind of really you know sexy end of science, maybe you know sequencing the genomes or developing a vaccine, and of course we need that. But it, there's a whole massive, massive piece of research, the base of the pyramid, that really isn't easy to fund. And the hardest bit is the piece we're doing, this research enabling. So giving people the skills to do research, you know, building research confidence and expertise in healthcare settings. And that's what's really hard um, to persuade funders that it's worth the investment. They love funding the big vaccine trial, but they're not so good at funding teaching people to do those trials or, or building the research system in that healthcare setting. And so I spend a lot of my time trying to persuade funders. That's a really good investment, actually, to say, you know, across one country or even in one healthcare setting, let's support these nurses to learn to do research. Let's put a research system in the laboratory. Let's build that structure in the base of that pyramid. And then that's where we really um, try and persuade funders that it's it's a much better, actually, investment in the long term to generate that really pragmatic evidence that can change practice straight away. And then you've got those teams trained up and then they're able to um, to run their own studies and be independent. So it's hard to fund, but it's a good investment. <laughs>